despite being a former sales rep turned copywriter, I am terrified to sell. Big takeaways that I'm learning from working with my business coach, I've been having crazy realizations, one of them being that I am terrified to sell. I'm horrified. I am completely stricken with fear and it holds me back and it's been holding me back and it's been impacting my ability to build a profitable business, which is crazy because if it's impacting me that way, somebody who was trained as a salesperson, somebody who has been doing copywriting and writing sales and marketing materials for big companies, what chance does the average person stand? So if you are an online business owner or a freelancer, the one thing you absolutely must do and it's non-negotiable is have confidence in yourself and what you are selling in order to persuade other people to want to do business with you and buy from you. And my problem is, is that I realize I've been going back and forth with myself, wanting to say things and wanting to sell myself and my services through my copy specifically, but then feeling the urge to tone myself down, to make my writing less bold because I don't want to appear salesy or I don't want to say anything that could not be true or make any false promises. It's like all these fears about, I need to make sure that I'm not the hypey person online, that I'm not overly selling myself and annoying people. It has really kept me small and I believe I'd be making more money right now if it weren't for that. If I was bolder sooner, or if I came across stronger in my, or if I sold more confidently, whether it's my freelance writing services or my digital products, if I had the courage to just sell the way other copywriters do, I would be further ahead right now. And that's my big realization. And I think women struggle with this more than men. And that's why when I'm working with my coach right now, who's also female, her husband's also part of the business. And he was the person who was taking apart and auditing some of my sales copy. And because I knew that in a couple days, I was going to submit my work to him and have him rip apart my copy line by line, I gave myself permission to go harder and write what I wanted to write on my sales page because I knew that a male would be looking at it and that he would call me on the parts where I was holding back or not writing persuasively. And by the end of it, I felt so proud of what I had written and it made me realize, wow, I've really been toning it down. Like, and I think the part of it, and as copywriters, if you're in the copywriting or the writing world or the marketing world, there's a trap we fall into where we think that something has been said so many times and we don't want to be the next person who says it. So prime example, my course 30 days to pay delivers a very specific promise that you will land your first high paying client within 30 days and rinse and repeat. But I have been so hesitant to just put that message out there. So I've kind of softened my message where it's like land a high paying client, make a comfortable income because I see people in this space putting out really bold promises that strike me personally as really spammy and scammy and hyped up and exaggerated. So in an effort to not want to be one of those people and not annoy people in that way, I have held myself back. And before you say to me, well, maybe it's good that you're not putting out these, you know, extravagant numbers and big promises. Yes, but at the end of the day, what converts converts. And I do have an amazing program that has gotten people to the result that I promised. And it's what I used on my own. That's enough for me to be bold about it. But somehow I've let the insecurity still hold me back from being confident in it. And I was listening to um, Kyle Milligan and he was going through his sales page and he answered and he, something he said in the video really stood out to me. He was like, yeah, he's like copywriters saying like, oh, I hate that line or because there's a device in copywriting where you lay out, you know, you you have your headline, you have your you know, you grab attention and then you move down the sales page and you go into the problem. And then after the problem, you go into the device and he calls it, it's not your fault, where you basically explain in your sales copy, like, hey, I know you've struggled with this, this, and this, but it's not your fault. It's, and then you kind of shoulder the blame. It's, you know, the weight loss programs that promise results, but don't work. It's the diets that are too hard to adhere to that no one can really follow. It's, it's a, marketing and persuasion principle where you basically shoulder the blame on outside circumstances 
circumstances. And because as people we love to not take responsibility, that's very captivating. But Kyle Milligan was saying in this video, he was like, because I guess someone was like, oh, I hate that line. It's not your fault. It's so out overplayed. Like everybody says it, but it's not your fault. And he was like, who gives a crap if you don't like it? It's what converts on the page. So I think this experience is helping me remove a lot of my emotion, which I am filled with self-doubt and crippling, you know, fear and insecurity. And it's a problem. It's something that I'm trying to, that I've been trying to overcome for such a long time because I know I have this problem. I have had very low self-esteem throughout my entire life because of a myriad of problems. And I've always known that that was a thing that was holding me back. In this world of betting on yourself and selling your services and getting on calls with people and persuading them to do business with you, the very least you need to do is believe in yourself. And so many people don't. And that causes other people to also not believe in you and not give you a chance. And that's why it's hard for people to land clients and make money online. And if I'm being honest with you, even though I started paidcopywriter.com in like 2021-ish, it's been years. I've been doing this. I have great reviews and testimonials and still somehow I feel like I don't belong in this space and that I don't have a right to be here because there's other people doing it. There's people who have been teaching what I'm teaching. There's other people, you know, in my space who have been maybe teaching their method longer. They have higher quality videos. They have bigger teams and they're more well known. So I've always been feeling like I'm like this underdog who like doesn't really have all the flashy stuff, but I know that my product as a really high quality and this whole like underdog mentality has just kept me like not focusing on myself but more just looking around at me being like well I don't have a big launch like that I don't have a nice website like that it's this comparison and instead of just staying in my own lane and focusing on serving who's here for me it's just been me comparing myself and that has gotten in my head and really kept me small and the reason why this is so I would say mind-blowing to me and business in general is very like personal development. Like if you're growing a business, you're going to grow yourself. You're you're going to grow, you're going to have to grow past your limitations and become like a new version of you because this process is filled with obstacles and challenge and you have to kind of like rise to the occasion. And it made me realize something. So that, uh, that saying when people say, if you could tell your younger self one thing, what would it be? The one thing that immediately comes to my mind when people say that is like, I would tell myself that that middle school to high school version of myself is stop trying to fit in, put your head down and get good at what you want to do. Because when I look at my adolescence, like middle school and high school specifically, because I didn't grow up in a great home environment, I was searching for so much validation from my peers and my friends. Like I cared so much about fitting in with a group. That was my thing. It's like, whose house can I go to after school to escape my situation? at home and how do I behave in a way that people are going to constantly want me around so that I always have a place or a person to escape to and unfortunately that has molded a lot of my personality of people pleasing of not having great boundaries of having really low self-worth of just shape-shifting and trying to be loved and accepted by people and if you're gonna be in business and you're going to do something that requires a little something that you know isn't required of a nine to five, you're going to have to let go of wanting to be accepted and loved because I'll tell you something, um, you're not going to feel good enough. And then you're also going to have people telling you you're not good enough and affirming that. So you have to grow a thick skin. You have to find your worth in, you know, something way bigger than people's compliments. Because I'm telling you, even every time I send a newsletter, I have people that say, I needed this exact message today. Thank you. And then immediately I'll get another message literally tearing me apart and telling me that I suck. Okay. And this just happens when you put yourself or your product or your service out there, people are going to have an opinion or a criticism, right? So, and I think the way some people might deal with that is just like giving up and not wanting to even do it anymore. But I think for me, it's been, okay, I need to shape shift and be small and not say certain things in the online space or else I'm going to get heat for it. I've tried to tone myself down and not put myself out there to protect myself from being being judged, I guess, which is just, it's, it's the worst, like cognitive, you can't have this fear of what people think if you're going to do this. Back to what I was saying about um, this advice I would give my younger self, I really wonder, because I genuinely don't believe in 
regrets. Like I think everything had to happen the way it happened so that I could be here right now, even the horrible experiences in my life. But there is such a thing as time you'll never get back. And because I knew I wanted to write at eight years old, I was writing, I was, you know, very interested in the English language and writing and reading. I think about how much further ahead I would be today if I had just stayed focused on my passion and like my interests at a young age versus trying to fit in with other people. That was more important to me. And I've told you this in my um, testimony video of coming to uh, of coming to Christ at age 30. But before that, it was like I blew blew every opportunity in my younger years to progress in my writing career. I had opportunities to be in honors English in high school. I uh, was, I scored really high on a standardized test in English and it got me admitted to this program. Uh, it was like a sleepaway camp for like gifted writers. And I literally called my mom to pick me up because I found out my scumbag boyfriend was cheating on me. Like my social life and really turbulent relationships took precedent instead of, you know, I wish I was like on honestly a nerd instead of going to parties and doing drugs and trying to fit in and having this boyfriend and like the direction I took because in high school you just want to be accepted and you don't want to be like the quote unquote nerd I wish I was the nerd that you know didn't spend time with people and just hunkered down and honed my craft what if I had written like 10 books by now because all those weekends in not trying to fit in with you know some social crowd what if I had 10 books under my belt where would I be now. I wish I had started earlier. So I don't regret anything, but I do regret trying to fit in and, and keeping myself small. And I think those are the two biggest regrets that we're all going to have if you identify with this type of fear where like you've kept yourself small or you, you have tried to fit in or you didn't want to say something because you just don't know how people are going to react. And you're, you're, you're not being your true self because you're with a group of people or you want to be in with a group of people that don't accept accept the way you think and what you believe. And as I get older and older, it's just more and more important to not care about being accepted by people. And I spoke about this in another video, but but basically I explained that I'm going through a pretty tumultuous, like quote unquote, friendship breakup in my life right now. And because I'm getting married soon, um, it's really painful because people like lifelong friends that I thought were going to be there for me on my wedding day literally dropped out of the you know festivities it's very painful it's a pruning season i i really think there is something divine happening because it's so the reason behind it is so silly that it's like ridiculous but i'm giving myself the advice that i would have given that high school version of myself which is okay so you're feeling lonely and you're feeling like ousted by the group and you're isolated what are you going to do about it and i have been working so hard and i have been putting my all into to building what I'm trying to build. I'm putting my all and trying to improve my skills. When life comes at you and you're not like, like when life starts to really fall apart, just put your head down and work and improve yourself. You will never regret investing back into yourself and trying to make something of yourself. That's the best revenge. That's the best, you know, I told you so is just come out of the experience better, a better version. If you're going to accomplish anything, my two recommendations are stop playing small and wanting to fit in with people because genuinely it does not matter. We're wired to want to be part of a group, but it's not the thing that's going to, you know, lead to your ultimate fulfillment. So you have to check that like, hey, am I just doing this because I don't want to be lonely? Am I suppressing myself because I want to fit in with a group? And then for business, it's like, am I really putting myself out there and giving my all or am I camping my voice, my opinion down because I'm afraid of what other people will think? Am I embarrassed of putting myself out there online because, um, you know, so-and-so from high school is going to look at my Instagram and say, what is she doing? Or your old coworker who, you know, you left the job, not on a good note. And now you're like, oh, are all my old coworkers going to gossip about me because they see that I'm trying to be self-employed such and such. So play full out because that will be your biggest regret. I promise you it will be your biggest regret that you kept yourself small and that you did 
didn't allow yourself to fully try something and take that risk. Even if you look stupid, even if you fail, all of the pain associated with failing is nothing compared to the regret of knowing like I wanted to do that thing and I didn't do it because I prioritized other stuff. That's like the big regret I have from high school. It's that I had interests, I had passions, I had talent, and I didn't pursue it because I was focused on stupid stuff. And you can listen to my whole testimony. I talk about extreme in terms of really veering away, but I had opportunities and I blew it because I valued other stuff. So don't blow it. Anyway, this is part two of this series where I'm just giving you my raw, unedited realizations and learning as I go. Let me know if this is something you want me to keep doing. Comment down below. I read all of your comments. See ya.